Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to Copper Jacket TV. So your head's about to spin. It, it might even pop. You are not going to believe what a federal judge just said in upholding a so-called assault weapons ban. His arguments are so far out there that it's it's just going to boggle your mind. So stay tuned to this one. It's it's incredible. Now, one thing I want you to keep in mind is that while this is dealing with things on a state level, we're talking about a federal judge. And so this could have impacts across the country with other judges that see things like this judge does. They can use this same argument. And while it's far out there, it, the order is there. The, the judge upheld this ban and denied an injunction. So this is extremely important, not just for this state, but across the country. So with that being said, I'm not even going to try and sugarcoat it. I just want to tell you guys what's going on here straight up. I'll also read to you directly from the order so you'll see at least part of what the judge says here. But basically, we have a federal judge out of the state of Delaware. The plaintiffs in this case are saying that that state's ban violate their constitutional Second Amendment rights. And that they would be absolutely correct in that case, right? Especially post-Bruin. But the judge does not see it that way. So how does the judge see it? Well, he sees it two ways, two very confusing ways. In one instance, the judge actually said that these types of, you know, what he calls so-called assault weapons are actually protected by the Constitution. Now, why are they protected? Well, he says because in order for them not to be protected, they have to be both dangerous and unusual. They can't be just one or the other. They have to be both, right? And while he says that they are dangerous, he can't say that they're unusual because they're all, they're, they're everywhere, right? In, in huge numbers. So that satisfies the constitutional protection of them because they are not both. They can't be one or the other. They have to be both. However, he upholds the ban by saying this. So pay very close attention to the way that the judge wrote this. You'll pick up on it pretty quick. But he says here, plaintiffs have not satisfied their burden of proving irreparable harm in the absence of a preliminary injunction. Plaintiffs claim several injuries. First, plaintiffs say that they will suffer irreparable harm because HB 450 and SS1 for SB6 prevent plaintiffs from possessing and obtaining assault weapons and LCMs for, quote, self-defense and other lawful purposes in violation of their Second Amendment rights. But plaintiffs retain ample effective alternatives, especially with respect, uh, with respect to the core purpose of self-defense. As defendants said at oral argument, uh, SB 450 regulates only a subset of semi-automatic weapons. These weapons are seldom used for self-defense, perhaps because they are ill-suited to the task. Unaffected by HB 450 are numerous other firearms, including handguns, the, quote, quintessential self-defense weapon, end quote, and then the judge cites Bruin. LCMs are not useful for self-defense either, and then he cites another case. Notably, plaintiffs are not aware of any firearms that come with a magazine holding over 17 rounds that cannot also be operated using smaller magazines. So you don't need the larger one. They, you can get the same effect using something that's smaller, is what he's saying there. Plaintiffs have furnished no evidence that they cannot adequately defend themselves without the regulated weapons, or indeed that their ability to self-defense has been meaningfully diminished. Consequently, I am not convinced that the inability to possess or obtain a quote-unquote assault weapon or LCM for self-defense or other lawful purpose constitutes irreparable harm. So did you catch that? Basically, the judge said that while these are protected by the Constitution, the plaintiffs can't prove irreparable harm because there's still other things that they can use. And they were unable to prove to me that in the absence of the things that are being banned, you wouldn't still be able to use the things that are available to you in order to protect yourself. And you can't prove to me that they're still not just as effective with less rounds in the magazine. And therefore, you know, you haven't proved irreparable harm. And even though it violates your constitutional rights, you still have other options. And therefore, uh, I'm just going to let the ban stay. Now, I understand that's just really simplifying things, you know, kind of break down the nuts and bolts of how we put this thing together. But that's really what the judge is doing here. The judge is saying they're not dangerous or unusual. And they're protected by the Constitution. They're in common use for lawful purposes. But self-defense, you didn't really prove self-defense like, like that much. Right? They're not used that much. 
Uh, as a matter of fact, I mean, you haven't even proved that, you know, you could use something else. So I'm just going to go ahead and uphold this. And this is all happening post-brew when they're supposed to look at text, history, and tradition. They're, start, they're supposed to start with the text there. If it violates the text of the Second Amendment, period, end of story, it cannot go further. So Bruin says that. That's, that's the first step. It cannot go further if it violates this, the text of the Second Amendment, which this is a clear violation of. After that, you have to look at the nation's history and tradition going back to, you know, the ratification of the Second Amendment in 1791 to the Reconstruction Era, which is, you know, mid to late 1800s, right? So they're supposed to look at that. This judge really didn't do either. Uh, he said that it's a new advancement. And he talked about technology and how technology has changed in this order. But really, as long as you give people some options and you don't ban all options, then this is fine. And I wanted to let you guys know about that because that is an argument that I think you're going to start hearing across the country. While right now it's kind of in just in Delaware that you're only hearing this from a federal judge, get ready because that's an argument that you're going to hear in other states as well. Will it hold up on appeal? No, no way. I mean, no. And then again, I mean, there's activist judges out there, right? But no respectable judge who actually believes in the Constitution and believes in the rights of the people would look at this and say that, okay, yeah, that makes sense. We're going to hold that up as constitutional as well. It's just, it's not going to happen, but you're going to see plenty of judges do it. More than likely, it's just a stall tactic, just trying to weigh things out because they know it's going to be appealed. It's going to go up to a higher court and then the higher court's going to have to look at this order and figure out whether or not this judge was right in denying that injunction and so forth. It's just like California. It's another stall tactic. But this one was so outrageous and so out there, I had to let you know about it. So anyway, uh, again, federal judges, man, I'm telling you, uh, so, some of them got me scratching my head. Thank you all very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Please like, subscribe. Have a great day.